Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Sony Mouse, what of the Gaming Drag today? I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming not safe for work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Super 24. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Where are the healers? Close. We will visit Aeon first. He will determine. Uh, Alex? Loken? I freeze. Oh, Alex? Loken? I freeze. One of the tribe's women, a fox wielding a blacksmith's hammer, approaches us curiously. Several others are behind her. Loken and I stop. I try to stand up straight and appear stable, despite leaning crookedly on my spear. What happened out there? Her eyes are cast fearfully at my wound. Half of these people don't want to believe demons are real. What are they supposed to make of my injuries? I, um, there was a bear. A bear? Loken shoots me a quick, stern glare. Yeah, bear attack. It was starving, we think. The beast was mad. Alex put it down. There was no other choice. Oh, oh, a, a bear. All fear and tension seems to ooze from them. They begin to step closer to me, all sympathy and smiles. But Loken pushes me behind him with a growl. He is mine. They back away. Of course, it's just terrible, really terrible. The ferals out there are savage. Yes, you must be cautious of the wildlife. The hunter should really step up. Our black runners shouldn't have to deal with this. Their willful ignorance disturbs me. There's no way they genuinely believe a bear did this. She bows her head to us, stepping away. The others do the same. Welcome home, Loken. I respect to you and your acolyte. Behind me, Loken copies our head-bowing gesture. I awkwardly do the same. After Loken exchanges a few quick greetings to the tribeswoman with me standing awkwardly behind him, he dismisses their concerns flippantly and shepherds me onwards. It feels wrong. Explain. Lying to them. Hmm. The truth would not be good for them. Do you think they'll ever be ready for it? It is better to be ignorant of the Black Ocean. Come. Aeon will inspect the computer of this Wyatt human. And your injuries, too. Hmm. I pet his arm. If you think you need to see the healers, I'm coming with you. His tail starts to wag happily. Thank you, Alex. When we arrive, I'm pleasantly surprised to see Nitro outside. He sat in a delicate lotus position. Legs folded and hands on his knees. Even as we approach him, he, his eyes remain shut. Stay. I will find Aeon. He will inspect my wounds. Want me to come? No. Remain outside. I wish to speak to Aeon alone. Remain close to Nitro. I can never predict what's going on in that head of his. Sure, I'll be right there. Loken smiles, then calmly strolls past Nitro and into Aeon's hut. Meanwhile, I hobble over to Nitro and whisper softly at him. Nitro? One moment. His shoulders rise and fall like ocean tides, before his faded eyes steadily flicker open. There you go. Coffee time. You're back. Ah, uh, just about. The shadowy black runner rises up to his feet, cracking his neck. His eyes flick in my direction, but don't quite look at me. Look onto me. Back as you were? Not exactly. Tell me. I learned things. Ah, yes. Things. Nothing empties the bowels faster than the horror of things. I smirk. You know what I mean. I do. The black zones are the nest of things, and each is always worse than the last. If you'd be willing, I'd like to know what you discovered. Of course. There's a lot to process, so I'll, I'll tell you everything. Good. This afternoon, or tomorrow, if you need time. No, no, today. I don't want to wait. He nods and stoops down and plucks a, walk, plucks a wooden walking cane from the ground. You're really not deterred. From what? The path. If anything, more eager to keep going than ever. There's more than your past you need to find. Uh, no. No? Forget my past. It doesn't matter. This is about helping the clans now. Nacho's face falls. You're eager to learn before. Whoever Alex once was, I don't want anything to do with them. There's no going back anyway. Ignorance won't protect you. Heh. <laughs> Tell it to the clans. You don't want to be like them. Face it, Alex, or become it. Anyway, it's good that you're up, up and about. Two days we waited. Loken insisted on watching you by himself, but we took shifts standing outside his home just in case. Don't tell him I told you that. I shrink in gratitude and humility. Thank you, Nitro, for everything. Wait, did Caius have a shift standing outside too? It was his idea to begin with. Huh. What's that tiger playing at? You know you were gibbering total nonsense the whole time. Sorry, I couldn't stop. I couldn't tell much of a difference, quite honestly. Still the same furless blabbering rodent. Ha, <laughs> jerk. Thanks for coming with us. You didn't have to. 
It's been nice to visit the Draconite clan again. You've been here before? A long time ago. A member of the clan requested me personally. Someone had gone missing in the Black Zone. They asked me to find them. Did you? He faltered sadly. Yes. Still, Dravonia has been kind. She used the old knowledge with great cunning. The showers, the schools, the heaters, the freezers. I'm impressed. I imagine it takes a lot to impress you. What, is my head stuck so far up my own ass? You know what I mean. You're the wisest black runner in Alayla. I'm not. Then who is? Atro shrugs. Someone I hope to never meet. Anyway, for Dravonia's excellence, the Draconite clan has one catastrophic shortcoming. Oh yeah? No tea. I roll my eyes with a smirk. You know how to boil water, right? Without a proper teacup? What am I, a savage? Careful, you're disappearing up your own ass again. Good, maybe there's tea up there. Anyway, Aeon has kindly agreed to let me stay with him. He's a good man. Very talented. He fumbles carefully over to Aeon's half-constructed vehicle with his cane, tapping the bonnet and whistling. Having wit is a privilege, but the knowledge of the Automonks, it speaks for itself. I frown, watching him move. Yesterday I'd never even guessed, guessed he was blind. Today, though, it's very evident. I stick. Stick? Yeah, your stick. Ah, yes. Fashionable, don't you think? I tap my spear. I got one, too. Still limping after yesterday. But you'll recover. This is just me. I need this to, need this to move around. You didn't yesterday. Are things different now that we're further out of the Black Zone? Yes. My wit is my vision. I see through the memories of the Zephyr. Out here, though. Out here, blah. Out here, though, there are none, and I'm not familiar with the layout of this place. It's like, no. <sighs> Logan and I can find the nearest border for you, if you prefer to stay there. Nitro chuckles, shaking his head. It's fine. My nose is just as sharp. Besides, if I need to dive back in to clear my head, I'll make myself available to the Dracone as a black runner. Yesterday, I even went on a salvage run for Aeon. Managed to find the parts for his vehicle. Ah, you beat me to it. You mean a blind man beats you to it. Step up in your step up your game, new blood. He grins mischievously. Can I ask for your advice on something? Mince is the best flavor. This isn't about tea. You continue to disappoint me, human. P come on, serious question. I'm, I'm, I'm to take an acolyte of my own. Hmm, I suppose, I suppose you already have the knowledge, and I've seen you in action. It's impressive. So, Lokan's right? I'm ready? I think there are things you should learn by yourself. No disrespect to Lokan, but he rarely travels. There are aspects of Alayla I doubt he can properly prepare you for. Like what? Nitro whistled thoughtfully. Take some advice from an old dog like me. Ever heard of the Ashlanders? Nope. What are they? Gangs who've carved a permanent home in the Black Zones. Dozens of them move around Alayla and beyond. Oh yeah, Taki mentioned something about that. Logan and I even ran into some sugar cooks near Rhinestone. It goes far deeper than just that. The Black Zones are lawless, a dangerous but lucrative fact. Ashlander gangs are as varied as they are lethal. A warlord sits at the head of each. They spend as much time fighting each other as they do interfering with clan affairs. Interfering how? Raiding, assassination, infiltration, salvage from smuggling, food hoarding. Dawn sugar production, you name it, they do it. Some Ashlander gangs are hundreds strong. And you think they're the true rulers of Ilayla, pulling the strings from beneath the Black Ocean. Are they? No. Chieftains like Caius or Dravonium make them seem like puppies at play. Still, there are, there's a thriving web of brutal politics out there. Take my advice. Get familiar with the Ashlanders. Meet their warlords. Make contacts. Earn favors. Are they dangerous? Depends on the warlord. They're hopelessly unpredictable, but often reasonable to Black Runners. We're neutral, and they need us. You might need them, too. Just don't get involved in their politics, and don't tell Logan. Ah, yeah, I bet they don't consider him neutral. He's pretty loyal to Dravonia. Precisely. If you're an Ashlander, you're his enemy. That's that. There's a hefty bounty on the Whisperer's head. How do Ashlanders even survive out there? Groups that big, the Black Zones would just swallow them. It's a dangerous life. You live on the edge. Makes you reckless. Some people prefer that. They've got their own ways of surviving. He grumbles doubtfully. That's not what you really believe, is it? Like, no. <sighs> no. I believe the Black Zones tolerate them. Maybe they think of Ashlanders as endearing pets, but in the end, they grow bored of their wa- They grow bored of their watching their toys squabble. I was hired by a gang once, the Fangs. Some of their people had gone missing, but I found them. It's all an illusion, Alex. Overnight, an Ashlander empire can just disappear. They all come to see their hubris right before the end. 
Nobody is above the negative ones. Nobody is above the black zones. Aeon suddenly bursts from his hut with Loken on his heel. He shuffles urgently to over toward me. Boy! Boy! He grabs my hand with a look of alarm and tugs me closer to him. You're okay! Boy, you're okay! <laughs> Easy, Aeon! Gods! Gods! Alex, you gave us a scare! What in the world happened to you? It's complicated. He peers closely at my face. Aeon, please, I I'm alright now. Don't you give me that! No, no, you're not alright! Far from it, I'll say! You're lucky you didn't lose that eye you are! He shakes his head, stepping back to regard both Loken and I. To the healers! Both of you! Loken snarls. No! None of that, Hound! I'll be checking in to make sure you've been! I do not see... I do not need to see... No, no, no! Don't you dare! Go! And take Alex with you! There's something heartwarming about seeing Aeon act the bossy father to Loken. It's nice to see the genuine care they have for each other. Loken, Alex has agreed for us to meet this afternoon to discuss what happened. Loken frowns at me. You are certain of this? Yeah, I think, ta I think talking it through might, act might help, actually. Okay, we will discuss the things you have learned. I will inform... You sullen sods aren't planning on leaving me out of that little chin wag, are you? You're not a black runner, Aeon. Bollocks to that, boy! Bollocks! I've been studying the old knowledge since before you were sucking tits for milk, I was. He brandishes the, exote the exotech tablet in front of us all. <clears throat> if I'll be studying this, I'll, I need a, I'll need all the facts, I will. So when's the con this convent of black runners I'll be attending? Hmm? Hmm? Look at a nitro exchange worrying, worrying looks. Aeon, I'm not sure. Aeon should be there. I want him to hear it. All of it. Ah, you see? Alex knows. He does. He does. So when? When, when, when? Your experience with the old knowledge would be useful. If you can boast an upbringing of the, with the Automonks. Hmm. I believe I am agreeing. If we are to determine the nature of this Exotech, we may require Aeon's assistance. Exotech. Alex has called them a Zephyr Corporation. He believed they practiced the old knowledge. They were, owing the build they were owning the building I found him within. They were a human corporation, not just Zephyr. Human. How do you know that? I reach for the tablet in Aeon's hand. He passes it over. I spin it around and show them the, fa the faded logo on the back. For tomorrow, for you. See that? I don't see anything. A joke ever get old to you? It's never not funny. Well, the words are written in my language, not Elalian. Your language? Your language? Elalian was the dominant language by a big margin, but this was spoken by humans. Why the need for two language? Why the need for two languages at all? Because human mouths are different from muzzles. They needed a language for each. Oh, you're speaking Elalian just fine. You are, and you could and you and you could speak my language too. It'd just be difficult. This is true. I have spoken these human words to Alex. They are uncomfortable. This Exotech clan was only human. It did not need. It did not include bipeds. I mean, it probably did. I doubt they discriminate. Maybe the company's founder was a human, or the executives were. Hard to say. Executives. These are the chieftains. I suspect a Zephyr Corporation was a very different entity to a clan. Interesting. Interesting. There seemed to be some kind of link between them. Me and a human named Wyatt. He owned that computer we found. Aeon snatches Wyatt's tablet back again. Perhaps there's a clue. I'll need a good. I'll need a good look inside. I will. I'll stay with Aeon to give him any support he needs examining this device. You two need to see to your injuries. Come find us when you're ready. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate the support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier anyway. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not say four contents as little as $5. Alrighty. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.